Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. One man shot dead in Black Lives Matter protests by attacker as protests intensify in the US. Cuba commemorates National Rebellion Day. Tunisian president appoints a new prime minister. Jordanian authorities forcibly closed down country's largest teachers union. We begin with an update on the COVID-19 pandemic. Globally, the number of infections has reached 16.4 million cases with around 652,000 fatalities reported as of today afternoon. The number of new cases reported yesterday was around 221,000. In the meanwhile, the number of recoveries worldwide has crossed over 10 million. Two months after the killing of George Floyd, protests continue with great intensity across the United States. Over the weekend, demonstrations were held in solidarity with Portland residents who are up against federal law enforcement agencies deployed by the Trump administration. But as the protests intensified, so did the violence from right-wing attackers and law enforcement agencies. On Saturday, as nationwide demonstrations were underway in solidarity with Portland, a man at a Black Lives Matter rally in Austin was shot dead. Witnesses have stated that the shooter drove his car into the march and then shot at the protesters. A similar attack happened at a demonstration in Aurora where a car was driven into the march. On the other hand, in Seattle, de demonstrations faced intense repression from the police, le leading to the arrest of 45 protesters. A similar crackdown on protesters occurred in Omaha where 75 protesters were arrested and also Los Angeles where the police preemptively declared tactical alert against a rally under the banner of refuse fascism and arrested four. In Seattle, the clash between police and protesters was particularly intense after a group of protesters set fire to an under construction juvenile detention facility. The police declared the demonstration a riot and used stun grenades and pepper spray to disperse the crowd. This Sunday marked the 67th anniversary of Cuba's National Rebellion Day. On July 26, 1953, Commander Fidel Castro with 100 revolutionaries launched the attack on the Moncada Army Barracks in Santiago de Cuba. On the same day, another group of militants attacked the Carlos Manuel de Céspedes military garrison in Bayamo. Although the attacks failed, they marked the beginning of the Cuban Revolution and eventually led to the defeat of the US-backed dictatorship of Fulgencio Batista on January 1, 1959. On the occasion, President Miguel Diaz Canel recalled the contributions of the leaders of the Cuban Revolution. He also encouraged the citizens to defend the legacy of Cuba's national hero, Jose Marti, and the revolutionary ideas of Commander Fidel Castro. He stressed on the need to face today's challenges with the same will that the heroes and martyrs of the revolution did 67 years ago. Diaz Canel also sent virtual hugs to the first secretary of the Communist Party of Cuba, Raul Castro, Commander Ramiro Valdez, and others who participated in the attack on Moncada Bay. Because of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, for the first time since 1959, Cuba commemorated the national holiday without the traditional rally to pay tribute to the heroes and martyrs of the revolution. However, thousands of citizens and activists took to social media to remember them and pay homage to their legacy. On Saturday, Tunisian President Kai Saeed designated Hussein Mechichi as the country's new Prime Minister. Mechichi succeeds Elias Fakfak, who resigned last week after a no-confidence motion was presented against him in the parliament over allegations of corruption. Mechichi is an independent legislator and served as Interior Minister under Fakfak. Even though his name was not proposed by any party, Saeed chose him. The Democratic Current, a member of the ruling coalition and the third largest bloc, has welcomed Mechichi's appointment. He served as legal advisor to the president. He now has a month to form the government and prove his majority in the parliament, failing which the president can call for a fresh election. The October general election threw up a hung parliament. The Islamist Enada party, forming the largest bloc, promoted Fakfak as the prime minister in February. However, after revelations that he favoured certain companies in getting government contracts, Inada filed a no-confidence motion against him, prompting his resignation. Mechichi would be the ninth Prime Minister since the 2011 revolution. The political turmoil is yet to be over, as some have already filed a no-confidence motion against the Speaker Rajit Kanuchi of the Inada. The vote on the motion will take place on July 30th. 
On Saturday, Jordan ordered the closure of the nation's biggest teachers' union, the Jordanian Teachers Syndicate, for the next two years. Jordanian security forces also detained several union leaders for questioning, along with raiding union officers. Authorities charged the union leader of incitement for a speech last year critical of the government, led by Prime Minister Omar al razaz other members of the union's governing council were also summoned by the authorities for questioning over criminal and corruption charges. The timing of these actions come just days after the union staged a mass demonstration against the government. The unions have accused the government of not fulfilling the 2019 agreement to increase teachers' salaries. The union, meanwhile, has announced a demonstration on Wednesday, July 29th against the Attorney General's decision and the arrests. The order to close down the union was given by the Prosecutor General Hassan Abdalat. Exact details about the charges slapped on the union's counsel are yet to be disclosed in detail. The only thing Abdalat was quoted as saying was that the charges included financial violations. Additionally, a gag order has also been issued on the investigations over the charges. The union represents more than 100,000 teachers across the country. It has been organizing protest demonstrations against the government regularly over the failure of the 2019 agreement. The agreement included as one of its clauses a 50% salary increase in the year 2020. The agreement itself was a product of a massive month-long strike that forced most schools in the country to close. However, the government unilaterally withdrew from the agreement over the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and declared holding of public sector wage hikes this year. And this is all we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.